All right. So we see here um, as an example of scenario planning in Anaplan. So as a, as a supply planner, I will have the need to distribute the sourcing or the, of the demand, um, you know, wh where it's picking up that demand from various uh, factories, in this case, California, Scotland, and Vietnam for my various uh, DCs. And we have a, a problem here in red that uh, it really caught the eye uh, of unfulfilled demand. So currently our last scenario was unable to solve this problem because we have uh, 11 million still unfulfilled. So what do we do? Right now we're only using 10% uh, uh, tolerance of, uh, of the sourcing. So we're gonna increase that to 25% and we're gonna enable outsourcing from some of our, our vendors. Okay, so then we run this button here. This will create a new scenario. Let's call it 25% um, over time and outsourcing. Okay. And then Anaplan is going to create the scenario and calculate the costs. We want to make sure that the cost and the parameters here are acceptable because uh, obviously, you know, authorizing overtime will create additional costs per, um, per factory. But in this case, it's still acceptable and we have managed to um, clear any unfulfilled demand. So with that, I'll... Stop right here and uh, I'll pass it to Michael. What I'm going to talk about is something that's very common uh, for supply planners across industries. Uh, I've seen it used in CPG when you're a certain percentage of a supplier's throughput. You need to keep them uh, lights turned on volume. If you have a highly seasonal business, um, often you have to pull stuff, you have to pull in your requirements. Uh, to address that peak. A long time ago, way back in the 1900s, uh, I was working on something like this that was based on shifts when I was scheduling five PCA lines, and we would be pushing and pulling from one shift to another. Different scenarios that have been created through rod step. So you can see right here, here's this 25% overtime and outsourcing that was just created a couple moments ago. For our purposes today, though, we're going to stick between baseline strict and 15% tolerance just to just to get a flavor of what comparing to is like. I have this on all periods. Um, we can select time. By hovering over this, the carrying cost is highlighted. And so this is the only place where the time is impacting the output and it's the carrying cost increase. So I want to see all periods on that. I don't want to just see it. Um, for one week or, or two weeks. As we move down, the base production capacity is here on the left, and here's the pull forward rebuild on the right. As of this moment, they're the same, but right now we can see that we've got unmet demand up here in the red um, for each for a couple of these weeks. So down here, it allows me to pre-build in a period. So I'm going to go, well, I get a little bit of room in the 31st. Let me, I'm gonna try to go as close to just in time as I can. So I want to fill all my buckets until I have no more unmet demand. And that does it there. So we've got June 26th, June 3rd, June 10th, uh, July 10th, and August 21st. Well, looks like we still need another week. So let's go back to June 19th. Now all the red is gone. And we can see that We've moved around uh, $268,000 worth of production, and we're expecting to incur increased carrying costs of almost 90,000. Not an insignificant number, but that's what the pull forwards are going to cost us. So we've got that, we've got baseline strict, say that we've solved, we've solved the supply or the output of our factory for the scenario baseline strict. But I wanna take a look at it for baseline 15, or 15% tolerance, same thing. We start with these are both early, but you know, I can look at this and I can go, well, the factory's gonna run out of work next week. They're not gonna have anything to do. 
I need to pull forward product into this week of May 29th. So I can choose to pull that in all the way to May 29th, brings it all the way up, gets rid of any of my over capacities, and it's right there. So now I have successfully worked through two scenarios that were handed down from the sourcing team or the or the production split team to the supply planner. I've worked two, through two scenarios and I can come to this next page, production scenario comparison, and I can see all the scenarios with the numbers up top if I wanna see them flat. But if I wanna pick two to sp specifically compare, I can choose the ones that we worked, I can choose baseline strict, and I can use 15% tolerance. I have to excuse me one second, our user filters aren't set up in here. And we get this popped up and we can compare. So we know with a 15% tolerance, we've got 25 million more in revenue, uh, 8 million more in COGS, gross margin actually is slightly improved, um, and there's less unfulfilled demand, likely because we're pulling in items early and, and running less of a risk to drop below safety stock and therefore putting our fulfillment levels at risk. So now I can choose which one's the best for me. I can choose this final selection and we'll go ahead and we'll say, we're gonna go with a 15% tolerance. And then we can approve the optimized scenario and then we can actually release the production orders and the production orders can be fed back into an ERP system. They could be sent off to a supplier. You can do whatever you want, but we've gone all the way from the point from where we're deciding which factory should build to when the factory should build, and then we're actually creating the production orders at this stage, all through the comparison of scenarios. And with that, I will hand it over to Mr. LaHood. Matt was just on a roll. He uh, he jumped into the, <laughs> the scenario comparison, which was what I was going to also talk about. Once the, the plants and the distribution centers have made all their adjustments in the, the forecast and in these different versions, the next step is to move it up to the finance. Um, so as a finance, as a finance analyst, I need to be able to look at these different versions and select the best version to move forward with as our final forecast. So in our production scenario comparison screen, you'll notice that we can we can review all the versions that we currently have. And as Matt showed earlier, when Rod created a new scenario, every su subsequent screen updates automatically. So the end user does not have to do anything to, to pull a new scenario in. They're always available when the finance user would go in and view the screen. So I can view all my scenarios at a very top level. I can also kind of look at my cost and my revenue. And as a financial person, projected revenue is exactly what I'm going to focus on. And that's how I'm going to choose our best scenario to move forward with. And then we also have the ability, and, and Matt has already selected these, I can view my revenue and, and COGS and profit and gross margin in a chart side by side. So when I'm looking at the top grid, let's say I select, um, I like the 15% contract. We have unfulfilled, no unfulfilled demand. And I like my 25% over time and outsourcing, but it's kind of hard to analyze them in this group. So I can move down here and select my 15% contract. and my 25% over time and outsourcing. And then I can compare these side by side and I can turn off to get a more detailed view. So let's say I just want to focus on my revenue. And I can look at my margin. And our margin goes down because in the 25% over time and outsourcing, we have more carrying costs and we also have more uh of the uh, contract unit costs. Now, once I have selected a final version, I would make my final selection, I would approve it, and then I would release my production orders, and that would set up this scenario, my 25% overtime and outsourcing for my optimization process, which would be the next process, next part of the process in our stream. And that's about it for comparing different versions and choosing your final scenario to move forward with.